بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم راشد سلیم ود لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی اب فنکشنل انگلش ون دس لیکچر از کنٹینیویشن اب لیکچر نمبر نائنٹین ان دا پریویس لیکچر وی لرنٹ ہاؤ ٹو ڈسکرائب پیپل اینڈ ان لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن ہاؤ ٹو ڈسکرائب پکچرز اینڈ پلیسز Now describing pictures and places is important because it is part of some of language proficiency tests, some international language proficiency tests. And very often in the class, teachers use pictures to check how well we can describe a place. Uh, similarly, uh, it is an important skill in real life too. Sometimes we have to describe a place uh, or really our own old photographs to someone in English. But first let's have a quick recap of what we learned in lecture number 19. In lecture number 19 we learned how to describe people's physical appearances. That means we learned how to uh, describe their facial features, their hair, their eyes, and uh, their clothing, and their general description. So we learned a lot of vocabulary which is related to describing uh, these features. Then we also learned how to describe personalities. And uh, we learned a long list of vocabulary Uh, long list of lexical items that can be used in order to describe the personalities of people. We learned some useful descriptive adjectives and phrases. And finally, you listened to three different dialogues in order to comprehend a natural conversation regarding describing people. Uh, In a way, describing people is somewhat related to what we are going to do in lecture number 20 because some of the scales remain the same. Uh, therefore, you would see that some objectives are the same. Objectives of lecture number 20 are that uh, once you have completed this lecture, you are expected to be able to describe pictures and places. As I explained earlier, that this is an important objective both from exam point of view and also from realistic perspective. Sometimes you want to describe your photographs, your old photographs, photographs of your childhood, your relatives uh, to someone and uh, you have to describe it in English. Similarly, sometimes, and very often I think, you have to describe the place, the place where you would like to visit, the place where you are living, um, or if you are telling, uh, uh, directing someone to some place, uh, again you can describe it. So while we will describe the pictures, we will uh, learn a sub-skill which is equally important. We learn how to use prepositions, for stating locations, the exact location of things uh, in a picture or in a photograph. Uh, you'll also learn how to state the differences between two different pictures. Uh, I mean spot the differences and also express those differences in English. So one of the common objectives of lecture number 19 and 20 is that you'll be able to use descriptive adjectives and phrases. And finally, you will be given a task. You will learn how to write a short descriptive text. So, I uh, hope that today you enjoy lecture 20 and uh, through a fun way you learn how to describe places and pictures. We begin Uh, by describing a picture. So how do we describe a picture? Uh, first of all, here are some phrases that we can use to begin. The photo shows, the picture shows, 
Uh, here I would like you to look at a point. We are saying the photo. We are saying the picture. The is a definite article and we use it when we are referring to a particular object. So when I say the photo, it means the photo that I am holding, the photo that we are looking at, the photo that uh, I am describing. If I say a photo, it would mean any photo. Uh, but here we are not talking about any photo or any picture. We are talking about a particular photo or picture that we are describing right now. If we know some background information, we can also add that. We can say it was taken by or it was taken in by someone and in some year. Uh, in January in 1992, it depends. Then you can also start uh, as a starter. You can say it's a black and white picture or it is a colored photo or etc., uh, etc. The second thing that you need to describe, uh, th that you need to tell when you are describing a picture is to tell what is where. That means to state the location of objects in a picture. So first you should be able to identify the objects in a picture. Once you have done that, you should be able to locate, their, uh, uh, locate where they are. For example, you can use these phrases. You can say, in the foreground, in the background, you can see. Foreground, as you guessed it right, is the opposite of background. So in the foreground, you can see. In the, foreground, in the background, you can see. Or instead of you can see, you can also say, in the foreground or in the background, there is, there is a tree, there is a river. In the middle or in the center, there are some boys playing cricket. At the top, at the bottom. At the top, there is a clock. Or at the bottom, uh, there, is, uh, there is grass. On the left, on the right. Behind, in front of. So you can say behind you see some sheep or in front of the castle you see some sheeps, sheep. Uh, between the castle and the sheep you see a shepherd. Okay, or there is a shepherd. Uh, so it is important that once you have identified the object you can tell where exactly these uh, objects are. Okay, the next thing that you need to do is uh, to explain who is doing what or what is happening. Okay, and here you describe the persons in the picture or you say what is happening, uh, like uh, the wind is blowing, for example, or if someone is uh, uh, playing piano, you can talk about that. And for this, uh, you use present continuous tense. Present continuous tense. He is doing, they are playing. For example, there is a man begging in the street. Or a man is begging in the street. You can use either of these structures. And finally, when you are given a picture to describe, you should tell what you think about the picture. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not really very clear, simply by looking at the picture, uh, what is happening. For, so in that case, if you are not sure what is happening, you can say, it seems as if, or the lady seems to be angry, the lady seems to be excited. Maybe it's going to rain. Maybe uh, the people are frustrated. I think. I think it is a holiday and people are celebrating it. Might be a symbol of. So you can say this might be a symbol of some sort of religious activity. The atmosphere is peaceful or depressing 
So you can use any adjective here to tell the overall atmosphere. You can say the atmosphere is uh, uh, depressing, the atmosphere is tense, the atmosphere is relaxed. And then you can also express your own opinion by saying, I like the picture because, I don't like the picture because, and it makes me think of something else. Okay? It makes me think of the football match that I lost saw, that I watched on television. So these are four steps that you should keep in mind when you are asked to describe a picture. And in fact, if, uh, if you are a language teacher, you can use the same steps in your class to facilitate your learners, uh, your students, to practice their English language. Um, you can actually get hold of some pictures and photographs from magazines, especially the interesting and funny pictures uh, that generate speaking are really very good for this purpose. So uh, what you can do is you can cut out these pictures um, or sometimes you can cut out a series of pictures like comics from a newspaper and then you can paste it on a card or different cards and then you can um, use them, re you can reuse them in the class. Uh, this is really an interesting activity and it is really very useful if you are a language teacher. Uh, uh, no matter whether you teach Arabic, Urdu, English or any other language. Okay, now as I told you earlier that sometimes you have to describe a photo or a picture in an exam. Some exams, international exams, they require uh, for example, IELTS sometimes, in IELTS sometimes they give you a picture or a photograph and they ask you to describe it in, in, in English. And while, uh, and in the meantime they are checking uh, your language proficiency. Uh, now here I am going to show you a short video by the British Consul and uh, this video will help you do well in exams that include describing a picture or photo. Uh, it would also help you in general uh, how to describe a picture, uh, but of course it will also give you an idea what is expected of you when someone asks you to describe a picture. So I hope you are ready. Ready for the video? Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to play the video now. Be attentive and listen to it carefully. Okay, you each have a picture. You've got one minute to look at your picture, describe all that you can see in the picture and explain what you think is happening. Uh, in the picture, there is a man lying on the middle of the road and there is a car and a motorbike there. I believe there is a car accident and that guy is um, almost dying. And people are trying to rescue him from death and in the right bottom of the picture there is a reporter holding a camera. And there is a police woman or woman or policeman and he is trying to uh, tell his partner come I think. Okay. You each have a picture. You've got one minute to look at your picture, describe all that you can see in the picture and explain what you think is happening. So in my picture, um, there are three men, they're holding water guns and shooting at each other. Um, they are laughing and I think they're very excited about this. I think they could be celebrating some kind of festival because, you know, in Thailand, that they, they celebrate their new year by splashing water on each other. So, I think the two men in the photo is the two is tourists so that that they are going to Thailand to celebrate this festival. Yes.
Okay, now that you have watched the video and you understand uh, what is expected of you uh, when you are asked to describe a picture. Are you ready to describe a picture then? Okay, very good. Um, so now I want you to look at the picture on the screen here and I want you to think uh, about the objects first and uh, then following the guidelines that I gave you earlier try to describe the picture in your own words so what do you see in this picture that's right there are babies okay babies are wearing shorts and on their heads, two of the babies, they are wearing a uh, chef cap, a cap which is normally worn by the chef. And uh, they are busy cooking something, aren't they? So what do you see? Uh, you see that uh, there are some ladles in their hands. There is one ladle in the middle in the center, lying on the floor. The baby on the right is holding two ladles, one ladle and one sieve ladle. The baby on the left is also holding a ladle and also holding his chef cap. And we can also see that there are two saucepans on the floor the one in the middle also has a glass top, a glass uh, lid with a plastic knob in the middle. Okay, good, great. Uh, now look at the expressions and uh, what do you think these kids are doing? They are really enjoying. They are excited as you can see from their expressions. They are active, they are lively, and uh, they are really enjoying the activity. Probably they think that they are involved in cooking. All right, great. Um, well, this is not all. In fact, uh, you can also give your opinion about the photograph. So do you like it or do you uh, dislike it? I'm sure that most of you say that you like it. Um, uh, so what's the reason? Why do you like it? Yeah, we all like to look at the innocent babies and their activities. It is always pleasing for human beings uh, to look at the babies playing around and uh, enjoying so this is a uh, sort of funny picture and it is amusing so uh, I think majority of you like it uh, because it is funny okay great uh, let's move on to the next picture and uh, see if you can describe this one so uh, what do you think uh, which place is it that's right uh, it's a seashore, probably it is a beach, and you can see that um, there are waves. In the background you can see high waves of the sea, and in the foreground you can see some people walking around and enjoying. Um, what kind of dresses are they wearing? Which country do you think it is? Yes, you are right. Uh, probably it is Pakistan. It is an Islamic country where uh, women, they, are, uh, they have covered their heads and faces also. And the kind of dress that they are wearing also indicates that they are uh, from Pakistan. In fact, uh, this is picture of Karachi and the uh, uh, people are enjoying their time uh, 
in the in the sea all right all of them are walking in shallow water the waves are uh, coming and going and they like how it feels and uh, if you look at it in detail and uh, uh, if you look at it minutely carefully you might find that some of the people are holding their slippers in their hands and you can also say uh, see that in the distance some boys are swimming in uh, in water and they are really enjoying when the waves hit them so when you are going to describe this kind of picture you can think of the sensory details yes uh, you know the five senses the sense of seeing the sense of hearing the sense of touch the sense of smell um, and uh, what other senses are there? Uh, seeing, hearing, touching, uh, sniffing, uh, and uh, tasting. Okay. So, uh, give any details of these five senses. So, what you can hear, what you can feel, what you can see. Uh, what you can even smell or even taste. Uh, in some pictures, of course, all the senses don't really apply, but uh, you can think of at least two, three senses that are applicable. I think majority of you like it because uh, once again, this is an activity which is joyful. People are happy, they are enjoying. Uh, this is the time of, this is a leisure time and uh, people probably have gone on a pi picnic and they are really enjoying it. Um, so that's the reason why you like it. One, another reason could be that it is a beautiful picture and it is a spectacular view. You can see that uh, the shadows of these people uh, on shallow water uh, are just in the forefront. Uh, so you can imagine that in the background the sun is about to set and it is uh, because the shadows are long so uh, you can probably guess that uh, the sun is about to set and that would be another spectacular view in a minute or in few minutes all right uh, very good so now that you have described two pictures you have a pretty good idea how to do it let's move on to the third picture okay so what do you see in the picture that's right there is a cock or a rooster and it is standing on the table on a white table and just next to it in a tray uh, there are probably six eggs and then uh, there are three men and two women who are staring at the cock. All of them are looking at the cock quite, uh, uh, they are quite observant. Uh, some of these people are in their middle ages. Uh, all these men and women, they are wearing formal dresses and uh, some of them are also wearing glasses. All of them are wearing their work overalls. Probably they are scientists or doctors and they are observing the behavior of the cock or the, the chicken. Uh, okay, so in this way you can describe this picture in detail and you can even describe these people. Uh, in the previous lecture you learned how to describe the physical appearance and uh, you can uh, explain how each individual individually looks like and what kind of dress uh, they are wearing and then you can uh, imagine what is going on here probably they are conducting some sort of experiment some research um, and therefore uh, they are quite seriously doing a thing thing which otherwise might be quite funny uh, staring at a cock
uh, might not be a very serious business uh, ordinarily uh, but these scientists or researchers uh, are looking for a particular clue for, uh, they are researching something so uh, that makes it funny or maybe you don't think it is funny so it is I leave it up to you uh, and uh, you can express your opinion about it now you have looked at three different pictures and I have taken it from the net and uh, what you should actually do is you should look for such pictures um, sometimes you know in the papers in magazines you find some interesting pictures like this one um, it is better that you make a file you cut out uh, those pictures and you can paste them in a in a file and later on you can reuse them in your classes uh, you can also use them to uh, practice your own English you can use it with your students in the class as well so uh, we move on and look at the next picture this time it's not one picture it's uh, there are two pictures side by side and uh, probably you have come across these kind of pictures in your life um, in the newspapers especially in the kids corner you often have such pictures in which you have to spot the differences you have to tell the differences between the two uh, pictures uh, probably you are already familiar with this uh, now these can be used for language teaching uh, if you are a language teacher you can use it in your own class uh, but li right now as a learner it is great fun and it is quite useful if you look at these two pictures and uh, describe them or at least find out the differences between the two okay now look at these two pictures and uh, can you tell the differences all right uh, if you just look at the cabinet in the upper right corner of this picture on the right the knobs of these cabinet they are of different shapes here they are circular but in the picture on the right uh, these knobs are heart shaped okay this is one difference can you think of any other can you find any other differences great uh, the time in these two clocks is different okay so this one is probably um, is probably uh, half past one and this one is probably uh, quarter to two 145 quarter to two so uh, I, I think so it it seems as if the time here is half past one and here the time is quarter to two I hope you agree with me on that okay do you spot any other differences okay there's one difference here uh, here you have a cookie or a biscuit but here you see that this biscuit is inside a wrapper that's right okay now look at this plate here and this plate there is a difference between these two plates here you have some added texture to it that's right okay yes um, in this picture you have three bananas here whereas here you have just two and if you just look at uh, the hand of this cat here the kitten here uh, the kitten is holding something colorful here where here uh, he's merely holding a spoon so probably uh, here it is a lollipop or something like this and here it is a spoon it's not really very clear so I can't be hundred percent sure okay so uh, you can sum up these differences uh, as saying that the knobs on the cabinet are different the clock tells different time uh, the biscuit is in the wrapper one banana is missing uh, the cat is holding a different object the plate has a different texture and bowl has been replaced with uh, if I'm not mistaken these are uh, pepper shakers 
salt shaker and pepper shaker, whereas here you have a bowl. So bowl has been uh, replaced with the shakers. Okay, uh, maybe you can find a few more differences, but right now I can't uh, find any more. Uh, you can see that while giving these differences, sometimes you say that uh, an object is shorter than the other object. An object is uh, more colorful than the other one. Uh, very often in language classes, find the differences activity can be used either for teaching comparative degrees of adjectives uh, or uh, they can be used in order to teach prepositions like the place is different they can also be used to teach adjectives uh, and uh, you can also use uh, them to make negative sentences uh, like uh, it is not there, it is there. And uh, so you can see uh, that these pictures are worth 100 words and uh, they can really be very uh, rich in content and uh, very often uh, when someone asks us to speak in English, uh, we feel shy and we don't find words because we don't know what to say right uh, but if you are given a picture you at least know what to say and you only need to struggle with how to say it um, if, if you just ask your students give them a topic and don't give them any visual clue or any picture uh, it will be difficult for them to come up with any ideas or with uh, they will feel shy uh, but if uh, they are provided with some visual information all they need to do is transfer this visual information into a verbal information and uh, hence this way they can abridge uh, the communication gap uh, so these picture description uh, can help you become an efficient uh, uh, proficient language user and they can also make you a very good teacher if you can use it in your own class. Okay, with this we come to, uh, the f uh, to an end of the first section of lecture number 20. In this section we have looked at an important skill of uh, describing, uh, describing pictures. Now we move on to the second section which is describing places. Uh, let's have a look at uh, an example first. If, for example, uh, we are to describe London, what kind of adjectives can we use? Uh, we'll use uh, we can say it is exciting, it is busy, it is hectic, it is cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan is like uh, an international, uh, a city which has international culture in it. Uh, multicultural, unique, it is historic but modern at the same time, so it's a mixture of uh, modernity, modernism and tradition. It's a thriving, prosperous city, so people are wealthy here, they are becoming rich. It's fashionable, lively because there are a lot of activity and fun uh, places in this city. So you can use these adjectives and I want you to make a note of these adjectives because when you are describing a place or a city yourself, you can actually use uh, one of these adjectives. Okay, so another important thing that you can do while you talk about a place is uh, to enlist activities that can be performed in this city. Uh, London is famous for its history, culture, art and museums. So you can give a lot of hints to the tourists uh, that these are the places of interest, the tourist spots that can interest them. Tourists go there to see Big Ben, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, Trafalgar Square, etc. So these are the important buildings and places attractive tourist spots uh, that uh, very often visitors like to see. 
you can get a fantastic view of the city from the London Eye. London Eye is name of a place. It's also famous for its theatres and shows in the West End. So one part of London in the West End you have uh, lots of uh, musical shows and theatres. Uh, and it is famous for its shops, restaurants and nightlife. There are endless things to see and do. So there are plenty of activities that one can perform in this city. Uh, so later on when I'll ask you to describe a city, you should act actually use these adjectives and you should also see what kind of activities can be performed in that city. So take it as an example. Okay, when you are describing a city, uh, you don't always look at the positive points of a city. Of course, uh, nothing is perfect. Uh, there are benefits and there are, uh, you can say, negative points, pluses and minuses for every place. So if there are advantages, there are disadvantages. Um, so you should, along with the positive adjectives, you should also learn some negative adjectives that you can use there. For example, London is expensive, it is crowded, it is stressful, it is polluted. I think these are the adjectives that you can use for majority of the uh, big cities in the world, especially those uh, in Asia and Africa. The underground system is dirty, travel is overpriced and unpleasant. The cost of living is high. Uh, the cost of living includes uh, shopping and house prices and etc. and traveling all that. The locals are always in a hurry and can be unfriendly. Uh, in fact, they often say that uh, people in London, they are very reserved. So if you try to strike a conversation with them, you want to uh, talk to them, most of them uh, probably would answer with a short one word, uh, with short one word. And majority of them, even in the metro, in underground train, they would be busy reading newspapers or, uh, or books. They uh, wouldn't probably like to talk to you. And there are some social problems like you can find in most big cities. Uh, you know, in big cities, uh, there are lots of uh, social problems uh, b b because of particular problems in the big cities. Uh, uh, some social problems occur. So this is how you can describe London. There is a list of adjectives that you should take note of. Then there are lots of activities for the tourists that you can recommend, the places that you think one must visit. And then you should also make a list of some negative adjectives uh, along with the positive ones so that you can give a balanced description of a city. Okay, now uh, you don't have a place doesn't mean it is a city always. Uh, in fact, sometimes you are given a landscape to describe. For example, if you are given a desert to uh, explain, Desert definitely has its own vocabulary. Wetland has its own vocabulary. Rainforests have its own vocabulary. Seas and oceans, mountains, grassy lands, um, I mean geographically different locations have different set of adjectives. Uh, it is advisable, it is wise that you make a list of uh, words and vocabulary items that you can use for deserts, for seas, uh, for mountains, for grassy lands, for wet wetlands, for rainforests, uh, for rocky mountains, uh, etc., or for plains. But let me uh, give you an example uh, by talking about the desert. Well, a desert could be harsh, dry, arid. Arid means that uh, it has very little rain. Sparse, sparsely populated. Sparse is the opposite of thick. So thickly populated, densely populated. 
is the opposite of sparsely populated. Sphere, sphere means extreme, hot. Okay, so these are the uh, adjectives that you can use for a desert. Uh, for rock, you can use uh, sharp, rough, jagged, and angular. Jagged uh, means uh, that it is really very rough. Uh, you can, some people even pronounce it as jagged. Okay, uh, if it is a grassy land, you can use the words wind blown, bent grass, dry grass, pale green grass, brown grass, flowers, etc., etc. Uh, for the desert, you can say um, sand, and sand could be coarse, coarse means rough. It could be fine sand, it could be glittering sand, glittering in the sunlight. It could be shifting, it could be rippling, s sifting, sifting through your fingers, for example. If you try to hold sand in your hands, it will sift through your fingers. Uh, it is white in color, it is golden in color, it is yellow in color, uh, red in color. So you see, a desert uh, is not merely a desert. It has lots of things in it. They, it could have grasses in it. It could have rocks in it. It could have sand in it. And the sky in the desert also looks peculiar. So you can use the adjectives pale, intense, cloudless, azure, purple, and crimson. These are the colors, the last three adjectives. Um, if you don't know the meaning, look them up in a dictionary, okay? Uh, cactus, you know, is a kind of a plant. It could be tall, it could be short, uh, short it could be squatty, spinny, prickly, or thorny. Uh, sorry, the fourth word is spiny here. It looks like a spine. Okay, another tree which is common in the desert is date palm, a date tree. And usually it is very tall, it could be bent, it could have leather leaves, and it could have frayed leaves. These are two different kinds of leaves. Uh, okay, I won't go into the detail here, but uh, you know for place you can look at the geographical details of a place. Uh, and uh, you can look at various objects the climate. So you, for example, if you are describing a desert, you can look at the desert in general. But at the same time, you can also describe rocks, grasses, sand, sky, cactus, date palm, etc. And you can also describe uh, camps if there are any, travelers, caravans, and uh, camels, right? Uh, the sunset, um, the sunrise in the desert because these are quite peculiar scenes uh, to the desert. They are very often associated with the desert. Okay, so in order to make your description vivid uh, and detailed, with, uh, you should give graphic details, graphic description. And that is only possible if you keep your eyes and your ears open. And if you try to expand your vocabulary that you can use in various contexts. Okay, now we come back to the cities again. And uh, very often we are asked to describe uh, activities in a city. As earlier we learned about activities in London. Uh, so what kind of adjectives can we use for a city? A city can be active. It could be bustling. Hustling and bustling means that uh, there is plenty of activity going on all the time. It could be noisy, it could be busy, it could be clean, dirty, or windy. Like Karachi is windy because it is a coastal city. Uh, you can think about another object in a city which is traffic. Well, traffic could be loud, it could be congested, it could be snarled. And similarly, if you look at the buildings, uh, they could be old, they could be shabby, they could be run down, crumbling, modern, futuristic, sleek, towering, or squat. 
if you look at the walls of these buildings, these buildings could be made of brick, stone, marble, glass, steel, and graffiti covered. This is interesting because in the cities, sometimes there is writing on the wall. People write with spray, paints, and with various things they write on the walls. This writing on the wall is called graffiti. So sometimes these walls are covered with graffiti. And these are called graffiti walls, graffiti covered walls. Okay, apart from this, in, uh, in the West, they often have monuments and statues in the cities. We don't have statues, but we do have monuments in our cities. And sometimes we also have statues. Uh, for these, we can use the words such as stone, copper, carved, ancient, moss covered, faded, green, bronze, etc. Uh, the next word is sidewalk, which is Americanism. In American English, we call it sidewalk. What we call in Pakistani English as footpath is called a sidewalk in American English. In British English, it is called a pavement, P-A-V-E-M-E-N-T. So isn't that interesting? Uh, because what we call footpath is, uh, by according to the Britishers and the Americans, a footpath is a path that is made because of walking. So you have a footpath uh, going up the hill. Jisko urdu mein hum pagdandi kehte There is a footpath. Uh, but a footpath which is a raised platform beside the road and it is used for the pedestrians to walk on, uh, that footpath is called pavement in, Brit in Britain, Great Britain. And it is called sidewalk in the United States. And in Pakistan, of course, Pakistan has its own variety of Pakistani English. We can call it footpath, of course. Uh, this sidewalk could be made up of uh, concrete, cement, slick, it could be cracked, it could be tidy, it could be littered, swept, etc, etc. Then you can talk about paints, you can talk about road signs, you can talk about vehicles like buses, cars and taxis and trucks, etc. In Pakistan, for example, uh, foreigners often take interest in uh, our truck art. The way our trucks are decorated, it is something amazing and it is unusual because in majority of the world it is rare. And you can of course also talk about the inhabitants of a city or the people who live in it. Uh, okay, I'm just going to skip it and move on uh, because here we have some activities for you. Um, we learned how to use certain prepositions or prepositional phrases in order to give the location of certain things. So if you look at uh, number one here, this is a ship. It is uh, on the left. This one is, number two is at the top. Number three is on the right. Number four is in the center. Number five is in the foreground. Number six is in the background, or oh, sorry, at the bottom. And number seven is in the background, okay? Um, so when you describe a picture, you should know where these uh, objects are located. Okay, now describe and compare the pictures. Uh, this is the picture of uh, the same place uh, the picture on the right, picture B, is 20 years ago, and now it looks like this. So picture A is a modern picture of the same place, and picture B is 20 years ago. Okay, I'm going to give these pictures to you as a handout, and I would like you to uh, do this activity at home as a homework. Okay, now uh, here uh, one of the pictures has been described and uh, in, the, in the box here on, on, uh, at the top there is a box and in this box you have some 
uh, words written and you are going to fill in these blanks with these words and then you can uh, cross them out okay I'm going to read it out for you in the picture there is a built up area on the which one of these do you think comes here on the coast All right. in the background there is a beautiful beach in the center of the picture there are three high-rise buildings and a lot of apartment blocks it looks like a typical uh, tourist town because there are a lot of uh, facilities for tourists such as uh, cars such as restaurants bars and shops the town looks very busy there are a lot of people and uh, and cars it's probably summer the beach is full of litter and the water looks dirty there is a lot of rubbish there's been quite a lot of damage to damage to the environment on the right of the picture there is a construction site probably there are still a lot of new buildings being built in the area it's picture number yes you guessed it right it's picture a okay now you are going to describe picture B on your own and uh, while you describe it you can use these phrases given in the right you can say there used to be there used to be birds for example right it didn't used to be so crowded or so uh, dirty there weren't any there weren't any high-rise buildings for example there weren't any aeroplanes for example there was less pollution there was less noise uh, and then you can say there were fewer there were fewer cars fewer people uh, in fact there were no cars there were fewer people there were fewer boats etc etc uh, so uh, I'm going to give you these two pictures picture A and B as a handout and I would like you to uh, describe them uh, in fact uh, you should write a paragraph describing them and uh, if you can write one paragraph uh, telling the difference between the two these two pictures have been described separately uh, so you can look at uh, that picture description that you looked at in the previous slide that will help you uh, that will serve as a model for you okay now here you are going to read this dialogue this dialogue is about the same two pictures and we have two characters here Ben and Kate and they are of two different points of view and once you go through this dialogue on your own I would like you to form your own opinion well Ben says what do you think about construction in coastal areas Kate says I think it's terrible it always causes a lot of damage to the environment Ben yes but in my opinion it's got some advantages Kate what I don't think it's got any advantages I'm sorry but I don't agree for a start it's usually good for tourism and that creates jobs in the area yes you are right but personally I think it's awful when natural beauty spots are destroyed that's true but tourism brings in a lot of money it's good for the local economy do you think it's uh, it's possible to build on the coast without destroying the area sure you don't have to have high-rise buildings or huge apartment blocks yeah and it's better not to have buildings too near the coast either that's a great idea and buildings should have a maximum of two stories right then you can get the best of both worlds okay so here you would see that some phrases are in bold type uh, when you have difference of opinion you can actually use these uh, bold type phrases and you can give opinion about a place uh, in this way uh, I, I would 
appreciate if you find a partner and you practice this dialogue with him or her. Okay, here is another practice situation. Uh, this time you are going to write down a short essay to describe this place to a visitor. Um, okay, just look at the picture and tell which city it is. And once you know which city it is, uh, you can find out from the newspapers, from the net, from the book, uh, or from uh, various persons. If you have not visited this city, you can ask others to find out what is here to see and to do. And uh, once you have made a list of things, activities that we can do here, you can use the previous models and the vocabulary items that I gave you earlier and you can write um, uh, two, three paragraphs. You can write an essay and you can describe this place to a visitor. Uh, think of a visitor who has never been to this city before. If you think of a foreigner, it would be even better. Uh, so think of uh, a visitor and uh, write down this uh, essay and um, try to use a variety of vocabulary and try to use the techniques and tips and strategies that we have discussed throughout this lecture. And once you have done that, you can also uh, write one paragraph describing the place where you live or the place that you would like to visit. Um, so uh, don't just limit yourself to one practice situation. In fact, the more you practice, the better it is. Um, in this video lecture, you have learned a lot of useful phrases, a lot of ways to describe uh, places and, uh, and pictures. Uh, so the, uh, you will learn better if you practice it on your own. Okay, so with this we come to the end of lecture number 20. And uh, here is the summary of lecture number tw 20 again, the main points again. In lecture number 20, we learned how to describe pictures and places. So we learned uh, a series of steps that we should keep in mind while we are describing either a picture or a place. A place could be a city, but it could also be uh, just one tourist spot. Then we also learned how to use prepositions in order to state locations in front of at the bottom, at the top, in the forefront, in the background, etc., etc. We also learned how to tell the difference between two pictures. And we can use uh, this tell the difference pictures in our classes as well in order to teach various parts of grammar. We can teach prepositions through it, we can teach adjectives, we can teach verbs, uh, we can teach present continuous tense, we can teach even passive voice. Uh, th so there are, uh, we can also teach opposites. So there are lots of things that we can teach through these uh, pictures. Uh, we also learned how to use descriptive adjectives and phrases. And finally, uh, we learned how to write a short descriptive text. Uh, you remember that in uh, lecture, in an earlier lecture, you learned how to write a short narrative. Uh, so now we have come the full circle and now you have learned how to write a short descriptive text as well. Um, so I hope that lecture number 20 has really been interesting and you have learned quite a lot of new vocabulary and grammar points to describe places and pictures. Hope that you will practice it at home and uh, you will do the assignment. Thank you very much.